Welcome back and thanks for joining us. If you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified of each new video. In the last video, we toured a 2018 Ford Transit 250 high roof extended camper van that sleeps for and has an indoor shower. In this video, we're installing paint protection film for our brand new 2019 Ford Transit cargo van. If you're installing PPF yourself, this will help you learn from our mistakes. Hey guys, this is Dory and I'm Mena. We travel with our lovely dog Fiona to help you discover the most beautiful spots and to share with you what it's like to live as a nomad. So subscribe and welcome to our channel. So we actually received already a few items for the van. We received the kill mat and we have the 3M vinyl protective paint. So it's like a plastic film that we have to install on the transit. So it's gonna go on the hood, a little bit on the roof. However, they do require some tools. We don't have those. So I'm on my way to Dolorama and hopefully I could pick up everything that we need for cheap. So today we're gonna to start out with the protective paint film. We ordered that online. Didn't take too long to receive, maybe a couple of days. Yeah, so they have kits online. Uh, I'll try to find a kit and put the links down below, but they have kits specific to your vehicle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, should be easy to install. We were shopping around and it was $1,500 to have someone do it for us. Now for us, Let's see, the film was uh, $400 and the accessories were about $30. So really it's just our time. A $1,100 markup just for our own time. I mean, that's just money in the bank for us. So we decided that with some guidance from an online video, we'd be able to do it ourselves and that way we're going to save that money and be able to put it into something that's more important. Yeah, like batteries or something like that. Yeah, batteries are going to come in pretty expensive. So. so the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a slip solution and a tack solution. So the slip solution is going to enable us to kind of slide the film into, into place. And the tack solution is going to adhere the film to the actual paint of the car. Now, it's very simple and all of this cost us about $13 Canadian that we just bought at the dollar store in the pharmacy. So for the slip solution, you want for, uh, let's see, for about a liter, you want three drops. So one small squeeze, two small squeezes, three squ small squeezes, and the rest you're gonna fill up with water. And I've labeled that as my slip solution. For the alcohol, what I read was that 90% alcohol, you want it to be five to 10% of the total volume. So here I have a liter bottle. And although this is 70% alcohol, I used pretty much the same theory. So I put 10% of 70% alcohol and I'm gonna fill the rest up with water and I labeled it, so that's gonna be my tax solution. And that is what's gonna get help us get rid of the soap and adhere it to the actual vehicle. So let's get started. We're gonna fill these up with water. We're gonna unroll our film and we're gonna get started on installing it. It's nice that we have your parents' place to, uh, to do this. <laughs> be a little trickier downtown Montreal, right? Yeah. All right, ready? Squirt, squirt. 
So now we have our slip solution, which is going to help the film slip into place. And then we have the tack solution and it's all filled up with water and that's going to tack it to the vehicle. So it's an easy way to remember to be able to differentiate your two bottles. So this is the film. We got it from Reflection Automotive. So they made us three pieces. One of them is kind of a piece that we're gonna cut down for the roof, for this, the front end of the roof. And the other two pieces are for the front end of the hood and the two fenders. Let's see how long it takes us to actually install this. All right, stopwatch. So I'm starting the timer. So the timer is started. Started at 10.22, just in case we forget to stop the timer. So the other accessories that we got to go with this were the squeegees and the clay bar. So the clay bar is for the prep, and this is gonna enable us to kind of clean the paint and get rid of any little dust. The clay bar was $12.99. We bought that online, either Amazon or eBay. We'll get back to you on that. I believe it was Amazon. And the squeegee, $7.99. Now we went to Canadian Tire and we found these big kits that were $30, $40. So, you know, $20, we got it off Amazon. Now we like to shop local, but if it's gonna be more expensive, <laughs> if it's gonna be more expensive and more complicated for us, of course, we're going to order on Amazon. We're gonna start with the fenders and we have to prep the fenders by spraying it with the slip solution and using the clay bars to remove any grease, residue, little bits of lint. And you're also going to need a lint-free cloth, which we brought. In this case, I have a towel, lint-free towel, just a regular lint-free polyester towel. And that's going to help to dry it afterwards to make sure that there's nothing that's adhered to the surfaces before we put the film on. We unrolled it and we figured out it's kind of like puzzle pieces. So you kind of have to match it to where you think it goes. And it seems to fit right here on um, the driver's side fender pretty perfectly. So that's that one. And then the next one is, I think, the hood. Yeah, and the next one, this one is the hood. Do you see how it comes down for this, this thing here? So this is the hood. That's pretty obvious. Yeah, so there's nothing in the front. Well, we have an extra piece and we could potentially cut it out from there. So now that we unrolled it, because we didn't, or I didn't really know what piece it was covering. Apparently we don't have a piece for this, which we're gonna have to figure out. But, so we have a piece for here and then the two sides. So we're gonna start on the driver's side start cleaning it and then we'll install the film. So first we're gonna soak it down with the slip solution, making sure I got the right one there. And I'm cleaning it. Get rid of any grease, any little residue. I don't know if you could see, it's already picking up some little particles of dust. And the idea is to go back and forth, but never to go in a circular motion. Oh, something fell in the garage. Now we're getting rid of the slip solution with 100% alcohol on a lint-free rag. <laughs> That's really bugging me now. <laughs> we took it on one trip from Montreal to Laval and there's already a rock chip. Anyway, so now I'm gonna spray this area again with the slip solution and I'm gonna put the film on. All right, there we go. Uh,
So there's an adhesive on the back of it and that's why you need the slip solution so you can kind of slide it around. And we're gonna get it into place here, right? And we're gonna go along the edges and then we're gonna smooth out the water and the slip solution with the squeegee from these areas here. So I'll start here at the top with the tack solution. Get that into place. Now we're gonna take the squeegee and squeegee out the water from there. And the little air bubbles. So this is moved and you could always reapply the slip solution to continue to move it around, okay? So now that I see where I want it, putting more tack. Now bear in mind guys, this is our first time doing this. So even for newbies like us, it seems pretty straightforward. Slip because there's some air bubbles in here that I really don't like. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to be manipulating the film this much, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're trying to remove the slip solution and the air bubbles as much as possible so that it can adhere to the surface. So we started by working around the edges. And now I'm gonna use my hand for this big area here because there's a bit of a curve. So now I'm gonna take the tack The good thing about it is that you can really see the air bubbles, so you see what you need to work on. Okay, so 45 minutes later, let me tell you, the first time doing this, it's a little tricky because every time you lift the film again, you get these tiny particles of dust that adhere to the actual film. So. Try and get it right the first time because every time you lift it, you're putting dust on the adhesive, which is now under the, between the film and the paint. Again, not ideal, but this is what we're working with. Around this edge here, I'm having a little bit of trouble having it adhere. So that's why now I'm using the hairdryer. So we've done our first panel, which is the driver's side fender. Let me tell you, <laughs> if you lift this film, because you have to replace it several times, you're gonna get lint and dust under there. We have a ton of lint and dust, and we have a few air bubbles. So if the air bubbles are smaller than a nickel, they're gonna disappear with sun and with time. So there's that. And uh, if you're very particular, I say pay the $1,500 and get it done because it's this first panel is not flawless. And if you're a perfectionist, it's gonna bug you. So there is a little bit of lint around the edges. Uh, to finish off the job, 
This was an adhering here at the bottom, so we used a hairdryer and that did the trick. Keep in mind, it's our first time, so we imagine that the other fender will take less time. So the second panel took us less time, 15 to 20 minutes, and we did it more quickly. We didn't lift it several times to move things around just because we knew we would get lint. It's a windy day. Just the more you lift it, the more you're getting lint underneath. We did get a few air bubbles. Uh, there was a couple that were a little bit bigger, so we pierced it with a needle and tried to get the water out. And over time, we think that it'll just flatten out. And we also read that if it's smaller than a nickel, it's not that big a deal. So we're happier with the second panel than the first. The first has fewer air bubbles, but it has more lint. And now we're gonna start working on the hood. Wait, wait. Merci. Here. This is a uh, tack. Okay, so we're gonna start, I think, around here. And at the same time, I can remove the dirt that's there. So the hood took about an hour and what really helped along these edges was the hair dryer to help it adhere to the underside. And you gotta make sure that the underside is clean too. We missed that step, so I just wiped it with alcohol. Also, we didn't quite align it properly as you can see here, there's a little groove that's supposed to be hidden and it's actually exposed, but we're gonna live with that. So we do have some little specks of dust there underneath, but overall it's still better than our first panel, which has a lot more flaws. So um, on the hood piece, you have a long piece that kind of folds underneath. So I've done my best with the hair dryer. The hair dryer helps to make the glue more sticky. That helps. So I think I'm gonna call that a day. I think with, you know, the warm temperature, that's gonna help it also to stick. This is one area I had a little bit of trouble with and I cut some of the film, but I shouldn't have because now it's not adhering as well. But yeah, so an hour. And I might fuss with it a little bit more just because I'm a little bit fussy but I think about an hour uh, for the hood is a safe bet. So what I realize now is that I should have started down here at the lights and went up and um, worked my way up. Instead, I did the opposite. I started around here and I worked my way down. 
So you can learn from my mistake so that you don't have this little area protruding and this little part exposed. You really want to start along this edge where the light is instead of starting at the top. So that was my mistake. So far, so good? So far, so good. <laughs> we're learning. <laughs> yeah, I'm still happy that we're doing it. Because we saved ourselves a thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect because we're fussy, but... Well, it's not perfect because it's our first time. Yeah. And, and we're fussy, so we notice it, but you don't really see the film and that's really the goal. Exactly, and we still have a protection in there, which makes me happy. Yeah, so it's something. It's better than nothing. So even with our mistakes, we're happy with it. Now we're going to work on the other sections. There's the A pillar. So I think it's this and up there around, around the windshield. So now I'm going to get started on this piece, starting with a slip solution. So here, once again, it's freshly cleaned and this time it's freshly cleaned and I'm using this to remove any debris or lint. I'm getting a lint-free cloth with alcohol and I'm going to rub that down. I'll wait for that to dry. So that other cloth was not so lint-free as I thought, so I'm using this towel after all. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, at least we found a home for this one. Even though we got a little lint. All right, thank you. I wouldn't mind uh, the ladder. So this one ended up being the easiest one, or it would have been, had it not been for the wind, it blew away on the ground, picked up a bunch of dust. So we cleaned it to the best of our ability, but there are still several speckles of dust that we're not gonna be able to do anything about. Luckily, there's no air bubbles, but we're gonna have to live with the dust speckles. So just know that if you get some dust speckles, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's not super noticeable, you're going to notice it, you're going to know that it's there and it's going to be annoying. Um, but I guess the I guess the lesson for today is definitely have two or three people doing this, especially if it's a windy day, because that's going to help prevent anything blowing away. Or if you could do something like this inside your garage, that's even better. Hey, next one, next one. So this um, spatula or scraper, whatever it's called, has to be at an angle. So at kind of a 45 degree angle. And I'm starting with this edge because it's the one that's most precisely fitting to the edges of the car. And then the rest, I'm either going to have to fold it around or I'm going to be cutting little areas or stretching. Okay. I felt some fluff here. It's an insect, actually. He got drunk with the alcohol. Yes.
I did to make these is that we had some leftover paint protective film and I took some tracing paper. I traced along these lines here, there, and um, then I put the tracing paper on top of the paint protective film and kind of um, drew an outline. And then from there we cut these pieces out. So these are so these are custom pieces that we made ourselves from some extra PPF that we received when we ordered it. The extra PPF cost us $140. Let me tell you, it's a rocket for some film. <laughs> so we almost messed it up and we had to improvise, but I think it's gonna do the trick. So if ever you wanna do this, my trick is to do it with tracing paper and then put it on the paint protective film, cut it out and then see if it fits and then just go from so there. So if you're getting a standard, what is it called? A half fender kit? Yeah, we got the partial kit. So it wasn't the full front. Uh, so we ended up missing some spots that we wanted to cover, but we did get an extra panel. So the kit was $269 and this extra 24 inches by 72 inches cost us $140. So we have to make a template of the extra parts that we want to put on the van. We're going to cut it out of this and then we're going to install it. It took us five hours to do the partial kit and I imagine it will take us another one or two hours to do the rest. So we want to finish up by doing this part here because we didn't have anything for this part and the same thing on the other side. And we want to extend the roof portion a little bit as well. I don't think we'll have enough though. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. So keep in mind though, depending on the kits that you buy, some kits even come for the bumper and mirrors. So I don't think the bumper and mirrors are that important. I'm more worried about the chips so I don't get rust in the car. So that's why we went with the partial, but Again, we're missing some parts that we do want to get covered. So I think altogether, everything was probably around $450 Canadian. And of course, five hours of our time. Now we think it's worth it because when we left our house, we had 53 kilometers and we already have two visible rock chips. If you can imagine that, it's a brand new van and we already have two rock chips. So this is a great, great investment. Yeah. I'm happy we're doing it too. It, it wasn't hard, it's just time and patience. And I think it's a good start up for the van build because there's stuff in here that's gonna be way more complicated yeah. than putting a film on. Yeah, the big thing with this is that it's a lot of detail work and you gotta be careful for the dust and the water bubbles or air bubbles but you're not going to get them all out and that's where we save a thousand dollars so for a thousand dollars saved i can live with a, a couple air bubbles and a little bit of dust so just keep in mind that as long as it's smaller than a nickel then you're good it's all going to work itself out so i would say if you want to do this don't be afraid to take on this project we're going to link in the description the cost all the tools that we used and where you can get this. This is a Canadian supplier called Reflection Automotive, but I'm sure there are equivalent companies in the US probably for a lot less because in general, automotive stuff is a lot less expensive in the US. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.